Battle Cats is a pretty good game. It has almost everything you could ask for. Battles, cats, racism, but it also happens to have a few downsides. For example, grinding, difficulty spikes, racism. Because you're black! That's why I've decided to make this semi-comedic tutorial to tell you some of the most common issues players have and how I got over them. I've tried to put these issues in the order that they would appear for most players, starting with energy limits and ending with how to avoid stacking strategies in general, so feel free to skip around. The first issue you might have noticed is that Battle Cats isn't exactly free to play. Sure, it doesn't cost any money on the App Store, but just like Hasbun Hotel cost my social life and Persona 3 Reloaded cost my dignity, playing a level in Battle Cats costs energy. You would be right in thinking that this is a red flag. After all, half the time energy systems take the Candy Crush approach of giving just enough to get players hooked and just too little that players are forced to spend all their money on the game. The rest of the time it's just used to stretch out short, half-baked games. Because everyone knows that what Mario Run really needed is another half-hour long Family Guy break. Thankfully to the latter point, Battle Cats is incredibly long. I put more hours into this game than into half of my familial relationships and I'm nowhere near finished. The first point is a bit more complicated though. You do start out the game with pitifully low energy, with a cap of 100 and a recharge speed of 1 every minute. That means you can only clear 8 of the first 48 levels before being completely depleted, which is something fairly easy to do in 5 minutes when the closest thing early stages have to a defensive line is a stray chihuahua. Worse, since the cost of levels ramp up, you could be spending upwards of half your energy just for one try at a later level. Now I have to admit, getting around this was a bit rough, even for me, uh, but the further you get in the game, the more options you have. The best advice I could offer you at the very beginning is to focus all your initial XP into upgrading study power, which gets you more XP per level, and then on increasing the energy cap. This simple mechanic gets you an additional 90 energy maximum right off the bat. You could also time when you play around events, as the game periodically offers half-cost events for certain levels. The exact level can be any you haven't fully cleared, and the events show up at completely random times. So if you ever happen to see this green bar, that's your cue to exterminate whatever unfortunate ethnic group it happens to land on. The game also tends to run half energy events for entire chapters. To my knowledge, there is no set timetable for this kind of event, but they show up on the calendar in the corner of the screen, so you can plan at least your next week around the most optimal time to play Battle Cats. Funnily enough- Wait, um, sorry, what's this? I'm, uh, I'm getting a phone call from my very real phone that I'm holding right now. Dad is in the hospital. He wants to see me immediately? Sorry mom, everyone knows that 7 to 8 p.m. on Thursdays is my designated grinding hour. Funnily enough, the best thing you could do early on is to speedrun. As I mentioned, you can get an extra 90 energy off the bat, but that increases by another 100 after completing chapter 2, and by chapter 3 you probably got the plus points from cat capsules for a total of 390. Also, look out for certain treasures in the first 3 chapters which give you an extra 60 energy each, with the next sip chapters having a similar treasure that gives you 30 each. If you fully clear zombie outbreaks, you can also get an extra 50 energy for every chapter, equaling a grand total that is way too high to count on my fingers. Alright, we all know I'm playing dumb, I want to tell you but I really don't know if it's supposed to be 1150 or 1150. Both sound wrong somehow. Someone please tell me in the comments, I'm genuinely confused. Also, as long as you're down there, uh, consider leaving a like and maybe subscribing so I'll be motivated to make more videos. Anyways, it's also worth noting that the 4th, 5th, and 6th chapters, Into the Future, have a treasure called the Time Machine, which increases the speed at which energy regenerates from once per minute to twice, making it one of the most important treasures to get as fast as possible. Now I've mentioned treasures a lot, but what exactly are they, and how do you get them? Well, that's the next problem we need to go over. Every time you beat a stage, you have a 35% chance of getting a treasure, which can be bronze, silver, or gold. Gold obviously has the best effect, so you want to get gold treasures for every stage. That means a lot of grinding, no matter how you slice it. So how do you make that less bad? You start playing during a special event where treasure odds are doubled for a month like I did. Seriously though, not all of us can be that lucky. So how do you do it normally? Well, there isn't 
isn't really much a way around this, except for playing during half energy times to maximize the amount of tries you have, or playing during double treasure hours, which also happen almost as frequently. If it helps, I'd recommend looking at what stages give which treasures, because even though almost all of them are useful, I'd much rather focus on a pair of swords that doubles my attack power than an anime figurine that lets me lose the game slightly slower. Now I know that's a lot of information, so let me summarize real quick. <laughs> Come on, don't don't change the scene yet. I, I know this style of editing is literally called ADHD core, but can we at least try to slow this down for once? <sighs> You're not gonna pull a Star Wars transition effect on me. <sighs> Do your worst. I've trained the last month for this. No. No, 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 no. There's also one more method of getting treasures quickly, but this will really depend on how lucky you get in the gotcha system. After clearing a chapter, there's a chance for a zombie outbreak, which is a remake of the level with stronger enemies and zombies. On top of getting 100 cat food for winning, if you clear every stage that makes up a treasure, it becomes easier to get it in the future chapters. How easy it is to get through, though, depends entirely upon how many anti-zombie cats you have. So if you have a Ferme, hurry up until those zombies Zombies, they need to themselves again. If you don't, just leave it for now. I'm sure the zombie outbreaks will be fine. Gimmick stages are the next real threat that players will have to face, but they don't really become a massive problem until a bit later in the story. One of the worst examples of a gimmick stage relatively early on is Aguham in the second chapter of Cats of the Cosmos. Fun fact, I remembered the name of the stage by literally googling worst stage Kataz of the Cosmos. I'm honestly impressed that I only misspelled one of the words in that sentence. So what makes the stage so bad? Well, it has one little restriction. The player can only use cats of the special rarity. Normally, this would just be a slightly annoying thing to work around, but there's one major threat. Coincidentally, this stage also happens to have an abundance of Ultra Ba, which are basically invincible without a shield piercer. There is one special cat with the ability to pierce shields, Loincloth Cat. Nothing in the game tells you this, since to unlock it, you first need to buy its unevolved form from the equip menu, then level it up past level 30, then unlock its third form from a stage which only appears once a month, and if you miss it, you just have to wait for an entire other month, then, after all that, to unlock the Barrier Pierce ability, you need to beat five levels with Loincloth Cat while holding the game upside down. Okay, I made that last part up to be silly, but hey, I couldn't go an entire video without spreading misinformation. After all, I don't want to make this whole YouTube thing too easy for myself. I'll also note that you could technically stall the Ultra Boss and use the Breaker Blast Cannon to force your way through, but building that is a hassle in its own right and depends entirely upon how far in the stories of Legend stages you are. Uh, also, editor's note, uh, I remembered that you could also technically get a second cat. Uh, I think it's Macho Little Legs Cat. That has a barrier piercing ability, uh, but it has the exact same problem as Loincloth Cat where there's no way of knowing until it's fully evolved. You get it from an event that only comes on at inconsistent times, so there's a very good chance you won't even have it to begin with. Uh, and you also need to get it from an awakening stage, which is once a month, and if you miss it, you're kind of screwed. Now, there are a ton of gimmick stages scattered through the later parts of the game, mainly stories of legends, so I'll speedrun through some of the other gimmick stages that players could struggle with. Torture Room. The only enemy is a single shy boy, which isn't exactly difficult in the slightest, but after 33 seconds, infinite assassin bears spawn, and you basically lose instantly. Use a combination of money up and attack up combos, then spawn an awakened Bahamut cat. Every player should have this cat by this point, and it should be easy enough to beat this stage in every difficulty with this combo. There's another stage where the only enemies are three one-horns. If you kill any of them, infinite assassin bears spawn, and you instantly lose. So, the trick is to use Pirate Cat to knock the one-horns behind the base and destroy it before they could die. This is one of my favorite stages, because it single-handedly convinced me to take a break from the game for a week. It spawns a single angelic gory, but killing it and attacking the base unleashes a horde of enemies that will almost definitely destroy you. Naturally, you would think since it's not a flood of assassin bears, you're actually supposed to beat the enemy horde, which made me try this stage many more times than I would like to admit. There's no real way of knowing this other than looking it up, but the enemy limit for this stage is capped at 10, and after only a little bit of time, 
these dudes spawn in with a sign saying you took too long. They are lying. What you're supposed to do is stall until they take up the entire limit, then kill the gory, and since the little dudes can be knocked back with any hit, you just hit them behind the base and destroy it. By the way, this is why I can't become a full-time Battle Cats YouTuber even if this video goes well. Sure, I'm fine posting an ironic flexing montage for a joke, but I have at least enough self-respect not to say, look, here comes the Scrimblo. I picked these three examples mainly because they're the only ones I remembered off the top of my head, but also to demonstrate how varied solutions can be to these kinds of stages. So if you ever get stuck, it might be worth considering that there could be a secret to the stage, like the kind of thing I mentioned above. There's also other kind of gimmicks, like, for example, the entire metal trait. Before unlocking any critical hitters, you need to spawn cheap meat shields, because even though metals don't have high health, they take one damage from every attack that's not a critical hit. So the trick with them is to spam cheap, fast attackers. Still, even later on though, this trait is still a gimmick. With the likes of Certain Metal Seal and Super Metal Hippo only being beatable with critical hits, which is basically just rolling the wheel of fortune and hope you don't get run over while waiting for that sweet 7% chance. In terms of avoiding stacking, it's hard to say exactly what you need because it depends on the stage. Because of this, I'll give you the cliff notes for a bunch of options that could help. You should always have a cat with wave attacks to take out peons. Slime Cat goes crazy, but it's hard to unlock, so until then you should look at a talented Dark Laser Cat, especially for 4 star stages, or Manic slash Crazed Sexy Legs Cat. Single target attackers are usually not worth the drawback, but a talented Greater Balrog Cat smacks enemies harder than the time I was told I looked like a reddit mod by a group of girls to my face. <clears throat> Professor Cat Job single-handedly runs the economy of my game, since he somehow has a combo with himself that nets you an extra 10% EXP per level, on top of being able to weaken an enemy to 1% strength for 6 seconds. An ability which is insane in his true form because he gets a surge attack which could disable every enemy on the field, whether they are right in front of him or so far behind that they haven't even been drafted yet. It's worth considering that the uptime on this attack is only 1 second since he attacks every six, meaning if you use enough weakened combos, he could technically infinitely lock an entire stage. Also, one final point, if you want to stop relying on gimmicky strategies or stacking or brute force, just use Kelsey. I know, I know, people say she's too good, people say it's cheating, but just come on man. You could use a seed tracker to get her anytime you want, it doesn't make you weak. So don't worry about your parents being disappointed in you. I mean, you play Battle Cats for God's sakes. You're either the pinnacle of confidence or so far gone that it shouldn't matter. Whew, jeez, this one was a tough one to make. Not that it wasn't fun or anything, but man, I really fell out of the habit with this break I've been on. Worry not though, I've returned. Plus, if you really missed me, you could prove it by watching one of these videos, or at least praising me endlessly in the comments. Oh man, hey, see you guys.